Hi, I'm Doug Lichtman. I'm the faculty director at the Ziffern Institute and a professor here at the law school here at UCLA. Um, and this year I asked the conference organizers to let me do something a little bit unusual. Um, if you've been with us in the past, I usually moderate a panel or do a fireside chat. But this year I asked the organizers instead to give me 10 minutes and a microphone. And they did, <laughs> so, so they have no idea what I'm doing with my 10 minutes. But I, I wanted a few minutes just to talk because I've been reflecting about the experience of these last few years. We've been through uh, a very interesting social time with the implications of pandemic and all the changes that's brought. We've gone through some tumult politically. And as I've been thinking about it just in my own life over the last many months, I realized that these couple years of experience really have reaffirmed for me two things that I think I've always really strongly believed. And I just want to take a few minutes and maybe share those two ideas uh, with you. Now, the first of, of those two ideas is something I think completely uncontroversial, maybe even uninteresting. I'll give it 90 seconds of my 10 minutes and no more. But it's just the reflection of how important what we're doing today really is, how important it is to be physically together with one another. We're back on campus. We hadn't been on campus for several years. And I, I think we all recognize the meaning and joy of just physical proximity. And again, I view this as uninteresting and uncontroversial, maybe except for one little wrinkle, which is for me at least, part of the value of the physical presence is something more than just the, the social chance to catch up, although I totally value that. Exciting to hear about what you know, the kids are up to or trips and so on. But for me, the physical presence is an important reminder that we're actually part of something bigger. We're actually part of a community. And that reminder, I think, is important because it's so easy to get lost in the day-to-day, -day, the, the hustle to, to, to make more money, to, to, to have a really successful project or deal, the reminder of being physically with one another and remembering that this is something bigger than these day-to-day -day things we do, the sense that we're here for each other, the sense that we're watching each other. I think it guides a little bit the decisions we then make in the days that follow. Or, you know, for me, as I think about today, like, you know, standing near Matt Thompson reminds me how important it is to me that Matt Thompson's proud of me. He's proud of the decisions I make. He's proud of the things that I do, even the ones he has no idea about. And so physical presence, I think, is really important. And again, I don't think that's particularly unique, the, my reaction to these last couple years. The other thing, though, maybe is a little more... Uh, unique. And again, it's something that the last couple years have really reaffirmed for me, but something I've always really passionately believed. And for me, it's something that comes up at the start of every academic year. Um, at UCLA, the law school, like most schools, I imagine these days, we start our year and we allow the students to come to any class they want. We, we call it the shopping period. And they can crowd in the rooms and, and, and spend that first day with a bunch of us to then figure out which classes they want to, t uh, to actually attend. And I take this very seriously. I know my rooms are going to be packed, and this is my chance to help the students figure out what classes to take. And so I'm very honest with my students in that first day. And I tell them that the classes I teach are the most important classes taught in the building. <laughs> and it's totally true. A, a quick aside, not so relevant for us, but for the, the patent classes that I teach, the pitch is easy. I tell the students that the patent system moves around an enormous amount of money, and through that, it impacts everything they care about. For example, environmental law. UCLA, we get a lot of young people come to UCLA passionate about environmental law, and they should go take the environmental law classes. They're amazing. But I always remind the students, if you're interested in environmental law, patent law really is the most important thing you should be focused on, because patent law is the thing that makes possible Tesla, for example. 
Right? It moves around an extraordinary amount of money. It gives us the funding to do innovative things. And I think that when you're thinking about something like climate change, innovation is going to be the ball game, not regulation. But for the classes I teach in our space, the entertainment law umbrella of classes, I have a different story. I tell the students at the start of those classes that television shows, movies, it's the most important forum we have for talking to one another about hard questions and important ideas. And indeed, I remember my own life experience along this dimension. When I was in high school, one of the most popular shows on, on television was a show called Party of Five which maybe some of you uh, will remember fondly as well. If you didn't watch it, um, the, the show starts before the show starts. The parents are killed in a car accident, leaving five uh, kids, brothers and sisters. And the show is the story of these five kids as they grow up and go through high school and life milestones and, and, and the like. And in that show, Nev Campbell, the actress, played what was for most of the run a high school uh, uh, young lady going through the pushes and pull of, of high school. And I remember very vividly a couple seasons in, Nev Campbell's character had a pregnancy scare. And for an hour of television, Party of Five thought about what this means for a teenage kid for the teenage kid's boyfriend, for the friends, for the siblings, for the other guy who had a crush on Nev Campbell. No, not, not, not me. For the, in, in, the sh in the show, there was a second boyfriend who had, yeah. Party of Five addressed this complicated, important, hard issue. Richly, and you contrast it to the way we deal with issues in general right now, you know, in, in society. Imagine, for example, trying to get a bunch of people together at 8 o'clock on a Tuesday night to talk about teen pregnancy and abortion. Really hard to get people to engage and thoughtfully talk about these issues. Look at our terribly broken political system, even the judicial system, quite frankly, right? How bad we are at these institutions engaging in honest, open, genuine conversation about truly difficult issues. I think of social media. Think of what you know, the, 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 the athletes, the musicians are doing up on social media as they dabble in and out on important issues of public policy. You, you get you know, thin, empty, maybe horrible stuff like you know, Kid Rock. Right, who for reasons I can't quite understand got really, really upset when you know, a beer company expressed a little bit of warmth towards the transgender community and decides for 30 seconds to post a video using a machine gun to shoot beer cans. Right? Contrast what these, kind of, what these other conversations sound like versus the conversations that our industry makes possible. Play out the Party of Five example. Right? Party of Five tried to think about these issues, and they did it with a character that we kind of loved, right? If you watched that show at that time, a few seasons in, you cared for Nev Campbell and that character. You cared about her rich fictional life. They did it with a group of people. Right? It wasn't just one person offering their one view. No, no, no. These are programs written by teams of writers under the collaborative experience with the actors, the actresses, directors, producers, execs. Right? We have a lot of folks, I think, influencing the conversation to make sure it's not terribly thin, terribly one-sided. It was a drama. Right? They had to have a drama. They couldn't do the episode and say, pregnancy scare, and obviously the right answer, which we all agree upon is... That's not drama, that's not good television, right? To write good television that had to be true to what we as an audience thought those characters would say and think and feel and move. Which means they had to host the kind of conversation starter that we needed. 
They had to have enough conflict, differing views, articulations of the reality that these are hard issues. That's why hard issues are hard issues. Right? It's because a group of decent folks getting together might not immediately agree as to what the right answer is. And they captured all of that. And they got us to watch it. And in the commercial breaks, they got us to talk about it. And the next day, they got us to talk about it. This is an important job. And, and you know, Party 5 isn't the only, far from it, right? This is an important job that our industry does, right? Think back to all the TV shows you've loved. Almost all of them do this, right? ER, the medical drama, go watch the reruns. They're constantly dabbling in and out of issues of mental health as they also tell a very entertaining set of lovely stories. You know, some of the shows are super intentional about it, right? Will and Grace, they knew exactly what they were doing. They knew exactly the messaging and the gentle nudges they were giving their audience on issues of sexuality. Maybe some of you watched over the last uh, couple years United States of Al, intentionally, I think, trying to make us think a little bit more warmly about immigrants, in that case, from Afghanistan. This is what this industry does. And as you think back over the last few years, it's more important than ever. Just like the physical interactions we're getting here today, the chance to see one another, just like that has been newly, we realized, we knew it all along. Right? Had you asked me years ago about you know, an event like today, I would have told you that the most important moments in an event like today are not the panels, they're great, not the keynote, it's going to be great, but the coffee break, of course it is. We knew that these last couple of years have reminded us of it. I think we knew this too. The most important part of the work we do is we create a unique opportunity in society for people to really think richly about the hard ideas we need them to think about. And so I just asked for a couple minutes, and I asked for a couple minutes because I want to leave you with just these two ideas to maybe think about. Idea one, as I think has become painfully apparent with the broken political system, with the difficulties we have talking with each other about hard ideas, with the dumpster fire of social media, as I think has become more and more apparent over the last few years, this piece of what we do is important. We need to say it out loud as the advisors, as the lawyers, as the executives, as part of this process. We need to remind each other, we need to remind our colleagues that this is what we do. And we should do it even when it's hard, even when there's going to be occasional blowback for having done it. This is a critically important part of what we do, point one. And then point two, my more trivial point, but I think really matters to this part of the discussion, we're part of a community. It's gotten a little lost over the last couple of years. That's why I'm so happy to be back physically here. We are part of a community that is here to support and push one another. And if you're doing kind of the first job, if you're out there trying to inspire the people around you to do this really important work of engaging on important issues through the shows, through the movies, through the things we do, if you're doing that important work and you're exhausted of that fight, I want to remind you that we're here and remind you how good it feels to show back up in a place like this and you know, stand next to, to Matt or Elsa or Ken and look them in the eyes and know that they're proud of you, that you're really doing this more important piece of the work we all do.